Good afternoon and welcome. I'd like to welcome you to the 11th Annual Silver Circle Honors. I'm Steve Novak, President of the Chicago Midwest Chapter. I'm so happy to see me so many of you here today. Every year when we do this show, we go out of our way to make sure that the Packers aren't playing at home. <laughs> this year we went even further. We made sure that the Packers weren't playing at all. And for a lot of you, we made sure that the Brewers, unfortunately, were not playing at all. I'm sorry. Coming from Chicago, I'm, I'm really sorry. I wanted the Brewers going. If they were going to beat the Cubs, I wanted them to go all the way. But having said that, we're going to talk about the event at hand. We gather today to celebrate those who have made significant contributions to Milwaukee and Madison broadcasting for more than a quarter of a century. And we celebrate our colleagues' hard work, many talents, and commitment to excellence. Before we start, I'd like to say that we'd like to send our deepest uh, condolences to the family of Tom Hooper, a 2010 Silver Circle honoree from WITI who passed away after spending more than 35 years in the business. And our, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Prior to today, 57 local television professionals have been inducted into the Wisconsin Silver Circle. I'm pleased to tell you that we have 20 of these past honorees with us here today. I'd like to ask them to stand and remain standing until, their name, until every name has been called. And if you can please hold your applause until the end, we won't delay this program. And I will also tell you, I am going to try really hard not to botch the names, but I don't promise anything. James Angeli, Sean Downs, Joyce Garbasiak, Mike Gusha, Daniel Jones, Dennis Kraus, Marianne Lazarski, Tony Lucas, Kathy Michaelby, Dan Needles, Jim Paschke, Ted Perry, Tom Pippins, Renee Raffelli, Gary Reistad, Sally Severson, Tim Van Voren, Ken Wainscott, Joanne Williams, and Jim Wilson. It's now my honor and privilege to introduce today's MC. She's a respected Milwaukee journalist who has worked for a couple of television, local television stations and in Chicago. She currently hosts Milwaukee Public Television's award-winning Black Nouveau program and is a 2009 Silver Circle honoree. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Joanne Williams. So thank you very much, Steve. Thank you all for coming today. Um, you know, Steve was uh, very gracious and asked me to help him make sure he got all the names pronounced correctly. <laughs> However, the ones that were a little shaky, he didn't ask me about. So I thought, you got those. Next year, Steve will go through the whole list. Uh, yes, my name is Joanne Williams. And um, as we all know, when you're doing television news, you go out on the street and you meet lots of people. And since I don't do day-to-day -day news anymore, people will come up to me and they'll say, oh, you're still at it. And I'll tell them, yes, I'm still at it. I'm at PBS now, and I host Black Nouveau. And they will say, um, or else they'll say, oh, I know you. I know you. We've all had this experience. I know you. Your name is, um, your name is, uh, Joyce. And I'll say, um, no. They'll say, yes it is, your name is Joyce. <laughs> and I'll say, no, you're thinking of Joyce Garbasi. Yeah, 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 that's it. I'll say, no, Joyce is taller and blonde. <laughs> and they'll say, oh, okay. Sometimes if they're really, really insistent, I will just say, yes, I'm Joyce, and just keep right on going. <laughs> Joyce, do you ever get asked if you're me? <laughs> Uh, so that, you know, that, that brings your, your ego down to ground level very quickly. 
and, and when they still say you're still doing it. Um, so this year, it's full of surprises. This is a year full of surprises for all of us. Who would have believed that we would have just covered the first events and games in a brand new Milwaukee Bucks Arena, the Pfizer Forum, and would be looking forward to the demise of the BMO Harris Bradley Center, a building that many of us covered from inception and now construction and soon demolition. Isn't that hard to believe? Uh, however, I want to say, and I think you will join me in saying thank you, Lloyd and Jane Bradley Pettit, for what they did for Milwaukee. Who, yes. Who would have thought we'd be spending so much time talking about midterm elections? And who wants to talk anymore about midterm elections? Let's just get it over with and move on to something else, like the next elections. And personally, um, I am just happy at all to be here this afternoon and very grateful that I am. So thank you very much for letting me come and MC today's program. Um, and I hope you enjoy the show. You're going to hear a lot about sports this afternoon. You've already heard a little bit about it. I had a really good reference in my speech about who'd have thought we'd be covering a World Series. <laughs> yeah, who'd have thought it? Never mind. We span different eras in today's program. We have a lineup of honorees from a sports anchor who covered everything from bowling to Vince Lombardi. Another sports anchor more familiar with Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. We'll honor a sports photographer who has been an eyewitness to some of Wisconsin's biggest games over the last decades. And we're also honoring an engineering pioneer and a trailblazing photojournalist who's been on the front lines of some of the biggest stories in the state of Wisconsin in the last many years. This year's honorees excelled in this highly competitive business and all-consuming business, and we pause here to thank them for sharing their professionalism and their many talents with us. Today, we celebrate their countless, countless achievements and their humanity. When we look at who should get the silver circle, we look at what they've done professionally. We also look at what they've done outside of the job. Everybody here has also benefited their community, not just their job. So we say thank you for that. As Steve said, uh, we want to recognize the passing of a 2010 Silver Circle honoree, Tom Hooper, who passed over the weekend, who made a great impact on television news in Milwaukee. Our second Silver Circle inductee is John Ivan Lazarevich. I told Ivan just bef before this started that I had never before pronounced his last name. <laughs> so I'm glad I hit it this time. He's being presented by 2009 Silver Circle honoree Kathy Michaelby and Kent Wainscott. Yeah, I know. That for, last line, Kent, by the way, tough act to follow. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> for more than three decades, Kent and I have been among the uh, scores of WISN 12 journalists who have tried to put adequate words to the exceptional images captured by the lens of John Ivan Lazarevich. The two of us have actually known Ivan and worked with him longer than just about anybody else. In fact, I was there the day he started at Channel 12. That was 34 years ago. He was fresh out of Rockford, the talented photographer with a unique nickname. Yeah, it's one he, um, uh, the story goes, picked up from a mutual friend of ours that he worked with in Rockford um, for no really particular reason other than Golda thought you looked like an Ivan, right? And, and the name obviously stuck, and to my knowledge to this day, you've never yet been mistaken for Joyce Garbasiak. So, no. No. 
I, uh, I, I actually did start working with Ivan even before he became Ivan back at our college TV station at Northern Illinois University. Instead of Ivan, we all called him Laz. That was uh, months that went by, actually. I don't know, his family may not realize this, but it took us months before we knew his name was John. <laughs> but even then, he was the uh, same talented photojournalist that he has always been, a little younger, a little greener, but well on his way to becoming the now very silvery silver circle honoree that you see here before you today. Nice, Kent. And because we go back so far, I have so many stories to tell. What time is this movie? <laughs> All right, well, you know, from New Berlin to New York, from South Milwaukee to, believe it or not, Somalia. And that was back in 1993, certainly an unforgettable assignment, uh, children practically dying before our eyes. And Wisconsin wherewithal attempting to come to the rescue. And in the middle of all that, I saw Ivan as a dad. And it's so cool to see the daughters here. I don't know how they grew up so fast, but that's the truth. Uh, and you have to know that they were at least a little uneasy about this particular trip that their dad was going on. We had to go on a little shopping venture to buy supplies for the trip. And, uh, you know, I got the chance to see Ivan with his daughters, and I saw his parenting style. He was firm, naturally. He was so loving and really a pushover when it counted. So that was one of my favorite parts of that trip with Ivan. He can also uh, deliver in the clutch. One time we were on a trip to New York to cover a hostage release, and Ivan and I had a source arrange this exclusive interview at a secret location. Uh, the guy slipped us uh, a map to get to this fuel depot on a cocktail napkin. And because of it, uh, we managed to get this amazing interview without the help of cell phones or satellite dishes or whatever. No offense, Kent, but uh, <laughs> we literally had to hurl this exclusive video across a throng of media to get to some dude named Joe, who neither of us knew, in order to trust that it would get fed back to Milwaukee. Amazing times. And, and I, too, have traveled with Ivan to Iowa. Yes. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> I've covered... <laughs> three Super Bowls mm -hmm. together with Ivan, one in an ice storm. And we also covered an ice storm, got stuck in Iowa. Oh, the memories. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, we, we, have, we have been more places than I can count. To give you an idea of uh, just how he sees a story when he's out covering one, we were covering a campaign one time. We were in a small town, and I told Ivan that I wanted to sort of find a way to convey exactly how small this town that the candidate was visiting was. And so he had me do my stand-up, standing in the middle of Main Street, downtown, at 5 p.m., right at the height of rush hour. But there was no rush hour. There wasn't a car on the road. There wasn't a soul in sight. Maybe a cow, I think, or a horse in the shot. I don't know, but that did the trick. <laughs> and. Uh, on the other hand, he has documented virtually every newsworthy event in Milwaukee and beyond for more than three decades. He also helped guide our coverage of the Packers from the Lynn Dickey era to the Don Majera, or uh, Majeris, Mikowski years. Ross I know, Ford. I know, I know. Uh, mm -hmm. We covered that too, though, you know, I'm sure. To the championship seasons of uh, Brett Favre and, of course, Aaron Rodgers. And I know I speak for Kathy and every reporter that we have had over the years at our station when I say that much of the work that each of us is most proud of over the years has Ivan's signature all over it. As our current news director, Ben Hart, said about Ivan, how many news directors do you think we've had, Ivan? If my count's correct, we've had 10. And Ben, who's here today, said something wonderful about Ivan in his note about getting this award today. He said, for decades, Ivan has been all over the globe collecting images and interviews from the world leaders and state scoundrels. One thing is for sure, no one in the newsroom could identify a day where they did not expect excellence out of Ivan. All Milwaukee journalists and Milwaukee newspaper, newsmakers all know that Ivan is a model of consistency and excellence, has been for years, and above all, is a great guy to be around.
And here is a closer look at the life and the career of our friend, John Laz, <laughs> Ivan right. Lazarevich. If you know John Lazarevich, you probably don't know him as John. To his colleagues, he's known as Ivan. After graduating from Northern Illinois University in 1980, he got his start as a photojournalist at WREX-TV in Rockford, Illinois. In 1984, he started at WISN-TV and has been here ever since. While the faces at WISN have changed in the three decades Ivan has been here, the consistency of his work has not wavered. Special report. Investigations that have changed lives. 12 News conducted an eight-month investigation that will change the way you look at fire safety in your home. This is something every parent should see. We wanted to know, can children be taught to save themselves in a fire in their own home? What we learned surprised us, the families, the firefighters, and the entire fire protection industry. Studies show that in deep sleep, only 1 in 20 children will awaken to a sound of 120 decibels, 50% louder than a smoke alarm. So if a noise as loud as a rock concert or a jet engine won't wake most kids, 12 News wanted to know why the fire safety industry would believe that a smoke alarm could do the trick. And we found a surprising answer. Which has this ever been tested anywhere? I'm not aware of any testing that was done with children. We do know that children have a much deeper sleep than adults. 12 News traveled to Underwriters Laboratories, the organization that sets the standards for fire safety equipment used around the world. Standards that will likely now change as the result of our investigation. Our exclusive investigation sounding the alarm has won a National Peabody Award. Travels around the globe. <laughs> including a relief mission to a war-torn Somalia in 1993. Last summer, 115 people died each day in Odor. Last month, the average dropped to 25 a day. Two weeks ago, people running the feeding centers told us the daily death rate is 10 to 20 people. A year ago, Odor's population was 25,000. Civil war, starvation, even measles and chest colds have put Hodor's current population at 17,000. Green Bay! An off-season camp with the Green Bay Packers. Del Marco Rivera football camp. Marco brought along a star-studded Packer lineup. William Henderson. Let me see your eyes. Niall Diggs. Run. Fumble, fumble. <laughs> I'm on green. Go. Antoine Edwards. Doing one -on -ones. And former teammate Joe Andrusi, right, now with the Patriots. That's it. Good job. Good job. But today, the real stars are these kids, 400 of them. Very excited. It's been the uh, first time I'll see one uh, NFL player up close. Ivan's work has certainly given the viewers of southeastern Wisconsin, as you can see, a chance to feel like they were there. The crew had already stepped out and was suited up. When July 2005, the first manned space mission after the shuttle Columbia disaster. When the problem was discovered. A trip cut short due to mechanical failures. Uh, everybody was so looking forward to flying today. But Ivan. They're also collecting data. They should and have a young Patrick Palantonio still delivered a story. The tank is being drained. The launch postponed. Saturday is the earliest date of departure. People from around the world set up along the coastline to see the first shuttle flight in two and a half years. Years, and a number of VIPs, including a congressional delegation, had a seat at the Space Center. Among those here for the launch, Senator John Glenn, who was a payload specialist on Discovery in 1998. It's the most complex vehicle ever put together by human beings. Generations of photojournalists at WISN have learned from Ivan. His ability to capture the reality of sports is second to none. Three Super Bowls. Seems like everybody is down here in New everybody Orleans. You're seeing people from all over the country, every coach in the country is here. A Final Four. And all 16 Greater Milwaukee Open Golf Tournaments at Brown Deer Golf Course. Those are the highlights of his career. But the highlights of his life are the people who don't call him Ivan. They're the little people who call him Papa. 
Silver Circle honoree, John Ivan Lazarevich. these other speeches. I may just use one of those. Well, thank you, everybody. I, you know, I'm truly humbled and honored to be here receiving this award today and joining this distinguished group. I can honestly tell you, I mean, I have been incredibly excited and nervous, almost to the point of being speechless about this for weeks. Anyone who knows me will tell you I'm not a speaker, so this should be a very short speech. So. I'm also not a writer, but I'd like to start by quoting one who is. Ralph Waldo Emerson once wrote, what lies behind us, what lies before us, are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Sounds like a pretty fancy quote coming from a TV photographer, huh? But I actually like that quote. Um, because I believe what lies within all of us as journalists is the desire and the ability to make a difference, to tell both sides of a story, convey a situation, feelings, or emotions in a way that lets viewers become part of our experience. Sometimes it's to right a wrong, sometimes shed light on social injustice, but always to tell the truth, present fair and accurate description of the events captured through our lens. Most of us in this room share one thing in common, in that at some point in our lives, we chose to become journalists. And we didn't do so with the sole intention of just winning awards or receiving accolades. But when it happens in something such as this, it's an incredible honor. To me, it's the icing on the cake of a long career that, as I look back on, still continues to amaze me. In the 34 years here at WISN and 38 years total in this business, I've been fortunate to be involved in hundreds and hundreds of great stories. From presidential inaugurations to smoke alarm safety, medical relief missions to Somalia in the, during the Gulf War, sports documentaries from local sports legends to three Super Bowls. The list is long, but as I know, it would be for any journalist who has spent this many years in the business. But through it all, there's always been one constant. I've loved this job, and there's always been nothing more satisfying to me to be able to do it, and I hope to do it well. Now, for those of, the, of you that know me, you by now know that I love quotes, so I'll throw in just one more. This one I've had taped to my computer for more than 20 years, and it's from Vince Lombardi. And that quote is, perfection's not attainable, but if you chase perfection, you can catch excellence. Now, through the years, I've, I've been very proud to be part of a WISN team that sets out on that chase every day and catches excellence more often than not. Of course, there are dozens and dozens of people who've played a huge role throughout my career that I will never be able to think of all or thank, but let me name a few. To my general manager, Jan Wade, and news director, Ben Hart, thanks for allowing me to continue to do what I've always loved to do. To my sister, Thank you for steering me in the direction of journalism. Although you were brutally honest about the business, long hours, days away from family, you always supported and nurtured my career. And I can only hope my career in journalism is even partially as successful as yours was. To my wife, Kim, my daughters, Lexi and Lindsay, thanks for the love and support 
for putting up with my crazy schedule that kept me away from home so often. Especially to Kim, I, I know it was difficult with your demanding job. Two young kids at home and a husband who traveled week in and week out covering Packers, news stories, often missing things like school plays, sports events, birthdays, and anniversaries. You know the saying, behind every great man is a great woman. Well, I'm certainly not a great man, but I have four great women in my life that always supported everything I did. And now I'm starting to cry, so that's it. <laughs> All right, well, like I promised, short speech. All right, my final thanks, and my final thanks really goes out to all of you. Not only my colleagues past and present at WISN and from other stations, but to all of you, journalists, you inspire me every day. Whether a well-written story or a creatively shot one, you push me to try to do better every day as I continue to try to catch that little excellence. Once again, thank you very much for this incredible honor. Hey, this is good. Thank you.